Uh, hello everybody and thank you very much for the interest in our work. Uh, I'm going to present uh, uh, results of our project entitled Fatigue Growth from Growth Dynamics to Microscale through Avalanche and Coarse Grain. Well, fracture presents interesting fundamental science questions since the strength of materials as a concept has to deal uh, with scales from the atomistic to the engineering of materials. One interesting everyday manifestation is fatigue failure, in which a load history uh, is imposed on a sample. When the sample fails, the variability and the dependence on the details of the history are questions that one needs to keep in mind on for any material and so is the impact of the material microstructure on these. Uh, statistical physics uh, has had an impact on fracture mechanics due to the tools it's offered to understand the fluctuations in failure. The main example is the depending uh, is the pinning transition of crack under applied tool and uh, uh, dynamics as the thermally assisted motion uh, of the crack tip. Such coarse grain theories uh, include uh, mechanics of elastic fields and the material properties as a frozen time independent disorder field and uh, is at best able to give predictions about crack velocity fluctuations, creep rates, and the roughness of advancing cracks. Here we take such a crackly noise approach to fatigue crack growth. Our goal is to show how the uh, mesoscopic crack velocity arises from coarse graining the short term and short distance fluctuations in the dynamics. The empirical viewpoint from material science community is that the main influence on the fatigue life and fatigue crack growth is the typical stress amplitude during a load cycle in a laboratory experiments. Thus, uh, the fixed rays uh, plays only a minor part. The crack growth rate is described by crack growth laws such as Paris Erdogan one. Uh, the apparent self similarity uh, of this expression may be misleading as a variety of more complex variants has been proposed, usually in terms of delta k or r. For instance, uh, Forman equation or Walker equation. And the two main reasons for this complexity are history of memory effect arising from the crack closure and the fact that a uh, fracture process zone encodes the extent of plastic deformation due to the peak stress during the fatigue process. Our work uh, concentrates on the stochastic nature of fatigue crack growth. Uh, we investigate the dynamics of time scales or cycles shorter than uh, on which self-similarity growth flows are formulated. This is itself uh, presents an, an overlook on fatigue fracture as a stochastic phenomenon with fluctuations. Uh, in order to provide this study, uh, uh, we choose uh, technically pure aluminum uh, 1050 alloy uh, in the shape of plates with 5 mm thickness, uh, subjected to H24 temper. Uh, which means uh, that the grains were elongated in the rolling direction. Uh, so we um, you choose the compact and size standard specimens with W equal to 5, 50 millimeters. Uh, so specimens were machined uh, while uh, the notch were cut by electric discharge machining. Uh, since we're providing an optical observation of the crack tip propagation, uh, the study surface uh, was grinded and mirror polished uh, with a final diamond suspension 1 micrometer and uh, the crack propagation direction was transversal to the rolling direction. Uh, to perform fatigue crack tests uh, we used MTS, uh, MTS uh, 858 uh, hydraulic fatigue testing machine. Uh, we used uh, two F maximum values 1500 and 1300 newtons uh, where during 1,500 newtons we vary uh, a symmetry coefficient 0 0.1, 0 0.3 and 0 0.5 and all tests were performed at the frequency of 10 Hz. Uh, to provide uh, crack length cracking we developed a experimental procedure uh, with optical observation of crack propagation uh, using Canon EOS R uh, with um, uh, where the specimen 
a surface was uh, captured every five seconds in a time-lapse mode so the difference was uh, between the images were 40 cycles and we used to collect about 30 40 thousand images for each experiment and that was uh, helping us to provide uh, crack cracking during experiments with the following algorithm um, the experimental setup consisted of canon eos r digital camera imaging the sample every four seconds using canon e e mpe 65 millimeters uh, macro lens equipped with a ring LED lamp uniform direct light created by ring lamp gets deflected by the deformed surface in uh, uh, close proximity to, uh, to the crack illuminating it uh, through the, we provide through the processing where we define the crack tip as the edge pixel of the contrast region on the uh, binarized area in the vicinity, vicinity of the visible crack tip using averaged uh, local background intensity as a threshold value. Uh, the accuracy of such approach uh, is of the order of one pixel and therefore comes down to image resolution actually uh, and was equal to 4.5 uh, micrometers per pixel or 112 nanometers per cycle uh, when the jumps are smeared uh, over the whole imaging interval, uh, which was 40 cycles. Uh, so by, by visually observing the crack advancement during the experiment, um, uh, we see that uh, the crack advancement is not smooth, but occurs uh, in intermittent jumps. This jumpy cracks, uh, crack position um, with A uh, can be coarse grained by applying averaging scheme. Uh, this is the uh, orange uh, curve, uh, uh, which yield the smooth crack velocity dA over dn uh, used in Paris plots uh, that I will show later. Another direction would be to study the crack advancement jumps. Here, uh, a jump delta A is defined uh, as the advancement of the crack between two images divided by the number of cycles between these images. This smearing uh, of the observed jumps are over the time interval between images serves uh, just to compare the jump size with the coarse grained crack velocity. Uh, we emphasize this difference between jumps in the crack uh, position single delta A and the coarse grain crack velocity dA over dn by using different notations. Here on the figure uh, it shows uh, this difference uh, for a single experiment as a function of uh, k maximum. The Paris curve dA over dn, uh, the orange one, uh, results from the crack advancement jumps delta A, which are the blue dots, through coarse graining. One should know that the lower value of dA over dn compared to delta A are due to the intermittency of the jumps, so that jumps do not occur between each image. Uh, the traditional analysis of the Paris curves uh, shown on this slide uh, reveals the effect of R and F maximum in this alloy. The region where Paris Erdogan law uh, holds corresponds to roughly k maximum from 7 to 13. Uh, and the power law uh, fit in this region reveals two things. Firstly, the exponent m decreases dramatically uh, from 3.95 to 2.34 as r increases from 0 0.1 to 0 0.5. Uh, secondly, as f maximum increases uh, from 1.3 kN to 1.5 kN, the exponent m stays constant. Uh, but therefore is a tiny increase in the prefactor C. These values are typical for aluminum alloys, uh, where, uh, where M is usually slightly over 3, uh, but sometimes smaller. We also know that the usual models uh, of the effect of R only apply a shift in the stress intensity factor term and do not change the slope in the Paris plots and therefore are not effective here. Now we can take a cracking noise approach to the crack advancement jumps by taking the aforementioned region where the Paris Erdogan law holds and observing the probability density of uh, delta A in this region. Uh, we, uh, plot on the, these pictures. Uh, 
we see that the distributions follow a power law and uh, there is also a cutoff at high values of uh, delta A so the full probability density can be written uh, using this equation where delta A0 indicates the cutoff scale. One can then fit this type of distributions to the data using this equation with a gamma equal 2 and delta A0 as the free parameter. Uh, for the case of different values of R, the probability density distributions with the fitted lines can be seen here on this image. An increase in R clearly corresponds to a decrease in the cutoff size. Similarly, uh, one can see that effect of the different values of F maximum uh, as, in, uh, as increases F uh, maximum corresponds to an increase in the cutoff size. As the correct growth exponent m differ between different values of r, the difference in the cutoff sizes should become more prominent as the stress intensity factor increases. So we study this by splitting the Paris Erdogan region in two. So here you can see the full scale from 7 to 13, here is from 7 to 10, and here is from 10 to 13. Uh, uh, we studied this by splitting in half and looking at, the, uh, at them separately. As expected, the cutoff size in the first half uh, are smaller than the second half, and the difference between the cutoffs for different R increases in the second half. Uh, the coarse graining that happens when one considers the crack advancement on larger and larger scales is demonstrated on this figure. Uh, where the time resolution of the experiment is rescaled from the original number of cycles between images that was equal to 40. The decimation is done by interpolating the correct length data to a new grid of n values with a different spacing, like 40, 320, and 640. Uh, so, after 1, 3, and 4 decimations, a uh, doubling of the cycles between images. The change of the distribution or as delta n increases show that the self-averaging hides the larger crack tip jumps when considering the jumps smearing uh, over the whole imaging time window. Uh, the, be the behavior of a zero value uh, can be quantified by taking the cutoff size determined uh, for each of the distributions and plotting it against the average crack velocity uh, in the corresponding region of the Paris curve. Uh, here we can see the uh, clear correlation between the cutoff values and the average velocity. Uh, we also found that the, the cutoff uh, has a direct, co direct correlation with the exponent m. Uh, uh, the Fatih protocol error value relation to this is shown here, where we see the linear relation, and thus, of course, the larger r, the smaller the m. Thus, in the creep limit where r equals 0, uh, where r, sorry, r equals 1, uh, the correct velocity would tend to be a constant. Uh, one can compute the conditional average of a uh, uh, next step uh, 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 as a function of the previous one, uh, which has a notation like this. Uh, all of these curves uh, uh, increase at a point corresponding to the location of the dump in the distributions, and before and the after this value, the value is roughly constant. Uh, this would imply a presence of the memory effect so the small jumps tend to be followed by small jumps and large jumps tend to be followed by large jumps. So what we find when following in details fatigue growth is that the crack tip undergoes intermittent motion. Uh, these uh, steps have a size distribution which is characterized by a particular power law exponent, roughly 2, with an increasing cutoff. The exponent value has no theoretical comparison in models of crack propagation in brittle materials. Uh, where the theory of the pinning transition is applied. The experimentally found cutoff increases uh, with the crack advancement and thus the step size and the typical uh, crack growth rate averaged over long times, which relates the size distribution to the crack growth law, the Paris Erdogan law. On short scale, the dynamics exhibit, co exhibit correlations such that uh, they imply pinning like dynamics, but with time and crack growth, this uh, gets washed out in analog to the average Paris-like uh, Paris law-like dependence on the velocity on delta k, which is in spirit assumes Markovian memoryless dynamics. Thank you for your attention.